The European um, Research Institute, the first one within the European University of Technology, is the European uh, Culture and Technology Laboratory. And the reason why there's two key words in that for me, one is culture and one is technology. It's an understanding of technology which is perhaps slightly new, it's, uh, but also ancient at the same time. So when we go back to the origin of the word technology, in ancient Greece we get two terms, we get techne and logos. And techne refers to all forms of techniques, uh, all forms of mediation in the world. And logos refers to all types of discourse of technology itself. But technology sometimes is understood simply to be instruments or tools in the world. And what, we, what we're trying to do is to explore technology as a process of becoming human. So we become human through technology, so not separate to us, they're actually part of who we are. So for example, glasses, you know, these are kind of prosthetic devices that we use, which enable us to become who we are in the world. So within the term uh, technology and culture, what we're trying to do is explore the, the social, economic, cultural context through which technology evolves and takes place. So that involves the history of technology and technological evolution, but also looking to the future of other forms of technologies. Yeah, so what's a little bit unusual about the ECT lab, the European Culture and Technology Laboratory, is that it's looking at questions of technology and society across eight universities. And some of those universities are linked historically to technical education, a more vocational approach to education, and others more recently have become technological universities, which are universities which have also arts, humanities, social sciences. So what's a little bit unusual about the participants in ECT Lab is that it's across these eight technological universities where we brought together a critical mass around questions of technology and society from the arts, humanities and social sciences. I think key aspects of the European University of Technology is looking at questions of European values uh, and technology. So if we imagine we have uh, within uh, the world, we have different forms of technologies which have evolved. We have examples which come from China, examples which come from America, but what we've tended to have are technologies which are linked to forms of uh, extraction of value or of money. So what we could think of is a term like acceptance, we have biodiversity, so we need to also accept that we have, have a form of techno-diversity, that we have different types of technologies from different cultures. And that's part of the role of the ECT lab, is to bring that to the European University of Technology. Well, one benefit we could think of immediately is questions around ethics. So if we imagine that the ECT lab is promoting new forms of responsible technological innovation and questions of ethics, what we do immediately is we have an impact on how we can understand questions of ethics and artificial intelligence, for example. So can we come up with new forms, new frameworks of understanding these technologies, and that's what we can bring, that's what we can do. I, I suppose that the, the idea is to say that if we have European values, we have, a, we have a charter, we have a mission statement that says we sign up to certain values, then what we're going to try and do in the ECT lab is see how those values can be embedded within technological education. So what we should have are new forms of technologies which are based upon values which are within the European community. So you can think of things, simple things like we have a version of social media platforms like Facebook, etc. or TikTok. We could also imagine other forms of uh, open source uh, social media platforms which enable people to connect, to take the positive aspects of social media without uh, constantly having a form of monetary extraction of that, of that exchange. So embedding European values even within new forms of platforms such as social media. I think the future is, is, is bright, it looks very good. We have, I think we're very positive about the second round of funding that's going to come through possibly in June. So for, for, for me, the next five years are moving from a kind of pilot phase really to implementation. So we've done a lot of experimentation in the first phase over the last three years, but the next five years is taking that experimentation and really embedding it within the structures of, of a new university. So we have, kind of, we have um, the ECT lab organizes uh, an annual conference. And it was very kind of brave 
within the European University of Technology to uh, enable this type of experimental laboratory coming from more the social sciences, arts and humanities. So we have an annual conference and through that our annual conference we have experimented a little bit with the format of what the conference is. So this year for example we had artistic interventions, we had music as part of the conference because they are also forms of techne and techniques. So we have a, an annual proceedings which is published, it's available online. We also have seminar series that we've run across the eight universities. So each one of the eight universities has hosted a local seminar. And we've come up with, I suppose, uh, one of the key outputs recently has been something around responsible technological innovation. So can we come up with a framework to understand new forms of innovation and making them more uh, sustainable and ethical? So the next steps are to take this pilot phase and to turn them into structures within the eight universities. Each one of the eight universities, can we have a, a manifestation or a format of the laboratory in each one of the universities? So either it's an allocation of space or an allocation of human resources to the lab in each one of the universities. Overall for the EUT, for the European University of Technology, the next steps are really to do with the next phase, so how we put in place structures within the next phase which enable us to deliver the overall mission. I think what's happened over the last three or four years has been increased awareness of the importance of the relationship between technology and society. Uh, and I think that's a key role that we have. So what we're, what the questions that we're asking about the relationship between technology and society have now become questions which are in the general public, they're in the media in general. So I think in one way that's our role, is to help prompt that discussion.